Good morning friends and welcome back to another episode of Last Minute Laura. I'm Laura and today I'm starting another dye project. So for this one I'm going to be using alum powder as my mordant and I'm going to be using birch bark as the color. So I've got some birch bark that I harvested from my parents farm off of a few branches that my dad trimmed off of their birch bark tree. I've shredded up the bits of bark you can see into some little pieces. And now what I'm gonna do to get started, this is gonna be a whole day that it's gonna be sitting. I'm going to put it on the stove in a huge pot full of water, and I'm just gonna leave it on a really low simmer. Not quite a simmer, just slightly cooler than a simmer. Really steamy, but no bubbles. Um, and I'm going to just coax out as much of the color as I can from this birch bark. I'm hoping to get some kind of a pink. Um, and I'm gonna put my order in on Amazon today to have the alum powder shipped to me for tomorrow. That way when the dye bath is ready, I'll be able to mordant my yarn. I'm going to be dyeing some sport weight wool from Briggs & Little, some bleached white sport weight wool. Um, and I'm hoping to get some kind of a pink from this uh, birch bark. So I'll let you know how it goes um, and let's get started. now since we put the um, birch bark into the hot water. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed with the color, so what I actually did, I grabbed a few tea bags and added these red rose orange pico tea bags to the water with the birch bark, hoping that I'll be able to get something a little bit darker. After I checked online, I realized I harvested not the entire bark, I only harvested the outer papery layers, so I'm not going to get a huge color payoff anyway. So I figure working with some extra ingredients is going to just help it out. So hopefully we'll get some color, but at this point, this is the paper dip. It's not showing very much. So I decided, since we're halfway through pretty much, I'm going to throw in a new dye bath so that the video can hopefully be a little bit more interesting. I have here some uh, plum flowers and branches that I harvested from my parents' farm. Um, they're all of the plum flowers oops, on several of the trees that were sick. I just took some of the, the flowers and I'm going to just add those to a big pot. Just ignore the dishes. We'll deal with those later. I'm going to add the uh, flowers to a big pot and I'm going to simmer them the exact same way to get out as much of that color as possible. I don't know what color yet. To get out as much of any color as possible. My goal is always to find a red or a purple so I'm hoping this will give me some version of pink or red or purple. I don't think the white petals are gonna do anything. I think it's mostly the sticks and leaves but we shall see. Hey Alex, we should just get married in the spring. Look at all these all free confetti. <laughs> Look, watch. It will be pretty. Wouldn't it? Oh my god. Come smell this. This smells amazing. Oh my god, I wish you could smell this. Smell. Sweet. <laughs> it smells like sweet. sweet. Very sweet. Like like it would taste like... Can I walk through? Yeah, you can walk through. Sorry. It's okay. Anyway, I got, how much is this? 56 ounces? So 56 ounces of plant material. And it's really pretty plant material. And I'm just gonna fill it up with water. Oh my God, I'm so excited to make my whole house smell like this. And then I'm gonna add it to the stove. Um, and I'm gonna simmer it probably an hour and a half. The bark, bark has been going pretty much all day and it's not really releasing a ton of color. Although I will show you it. So I'm just gonna leave both of those sitting for another hour and a half or so and then we'll come back and see what we've got. But first, let me show you what it's looking like right now. Okay, so it's the next day now. I soaked the birch bark, the tea bags, and I added a copper bracelet into the dye bath. 
and that's been soaking overnight and I've turned the heat back on this morning I've also turned the heat back on on the plum branches and both of those are sitting at about a medium heat just a barely at a simmer and I'm gonna leave them for about an hour and a half at the heat temperature and then I'm gonna turn it off and let it sit for the rest of the day to cool down then I'm gonna strain out the um, matter all of the plant matter and I think that's where we'll come back so I'll show you what we're looking like now um, and I'll show you in about an hour and a half what the change that we're getting is starting to look like and you can see the white petals have pretty much turned translucent which is really cool <laughs> into strainer. Okay, so now I am going to basically get my fibers ready to accept the dye. The dye baths are pretty much done. Um, I am going to let the um, birch bark one simmer down. I have four huge jars of the dye liquid and I'm basically heating up one and a half jars worth of that liquid um, in a pot on the stove just to see if I can reduce it a little bit because I don't really want to um, require myself to have to use this big pot for dyeing. Basically I only have one really large pot um, so I would prefer if I could make the dye bath work in some smaller pots. So I'm just taking one of my skeins of yarn. I'm using Briggs and Little bleached white sport weight wool and I'm retying it for four or five times around the skein um, just so that it doesn't get all tangled but I'll still be able to move it around a little bit. I'm doing the figure eight uh, tie in four different spots around the skein. There we go and I'm just going to add that to some soapy water. I'm using palm olive dish soap, which has already been mixed in, but the bubbles are too big. Great. Okay. Well, you can cut that out in editing. You're the boss, boss. You're the boss, boss. Okay, so I thought this would be a fun time for a little check-in. The dye stuff is on the stove, the yarn is on the stove getting ready in its um, scouring bath. I've got it washing and then we're going to do mordanting after that, but I thought this would be a fun time, ooh, fun time to check in and show you. This is what we started with for the birch bark. You can see, I'm dropping it. You can see all these little flakes of papery bark. And look what it turned into once I sat it in the water for such a long time. They all curled up. Don't they look so cool? Before, after. Definitely a different look. I'm thinking of drying these out and seeing if they could be like cute, I don't know, potpourri or like decoration or something like that. See if I can get a second use out of them before they go into the compost. So I'm gonna check in in about an hour when the wool is nice and washed and then we'll work on the mordanting next. So check out what it looks like. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours. The wool is now totally saturated with water and soap. I'm going to pour out the water, rinse out the yarn, and then I'm gonna put it back on the stove with just clean water, let it get warmed back up, and then I'm gonna mix up a mordant to put in it. Hey baby, yeah. can you move this onto the stove for me? Of course. 
So what do you think? Is it gonna go pink? I don't know yet. Or brown? Or maybe? Who knows? In the light, it's got some red. Yeah, wine, wine looking. Vino, vino. Vino. Any help there? I don't think so. Actually, can you give me a couple of pieces of printer paper? I can. I guess we'll just have to let it dry first. Or yeah, we'll have to let this dry. Okay, so I'm gonna just let my color swatches dry, um, so I can see what kind of color we could get with the. Mordant versus or modifier versus without the iron modifier. Hopefully, it's gonna turn into really beautiful colors. That's my hope, but we will see. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours now, and I am getting ready to mordant. Bless you to mordant the wool. So I've got the wool sitting in that big black pot. It's sitting there on warm heat, not quite a simmer, just heating itself up, full of water. I'm also boiling the kettle right now. You might be able to hear that. Once the kettle reaches boiling, I am going to mix about a cup of my iron mordant water that I made into about a full tea kettle worth of boiling water. Mix that all up until it's gonna dissolve the ish and then I will add all of it to the yarn and let the yarn sit for about half an hour in that hot iron water solution. Um, then the yarn will be ready to accept the dye and I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna show you what that's going to look like. So. Without any mordant, these are the light colors that we're gonna get. The pink that's closer to me is from the birch bark, and then the orange is from the, bless you, plum branches. The grays that we get at the bottom are from adding the iron mordant. So I am gonna mordant all the wool, uh, cause I don't have any alum powder left, I'm waiting for that shipment, and I wanna dye the wool today, so that's what's happening. Um, but yeah. We're gonna see what happens. I mean, it may turn out different than my expectations, but that's kind of what happens every time, and I think it'll be fun. Okay, so it's been a little while now. Uh, about 40 minutes, I've left the yarn in the alum, uh, sorry, in the iron water, and the dyes, the baths have just been sitting on the stove at like a medium, medium heat. So I'm going to be pouring these dye baths into these plastic containers and then I'm going to be pouring these yarns into those dye baths but I'm going to wash them out first so I have to remove them from this water I'm going to put this water on the balcony because I'm going to reuse it for a different dye bath um, and then I'm going to wash out the skeins with just water there's dishes because um, it's morning and that's what happens in the morning um, but I'm gonna take these yarns that have it's 9 30 in the morning now they've been sitting all night in this dye I'm gonna take them into the bathtub and wash out all of the color I'm going to keep the color uh, I'm not going to like throw out the dye bath because I'm gonna reuse it for one more round of dyeing I'm gonna dye some fabric in this liquid um, after the fact but first I'm going to take these into the bathroom wash out the skeins and then I will show you the final colors that we ended up with prior to them drying and then we'll let them dry so I'm just gonna let you see what we're looking at now and then I'll let you see them after we wash them out okay friends so these have now been washed out it's been a couple of hours I rinsed them with water and um, until the water ran clear and now I have let them hang for about an hour in the um, shower so they're still damp to the touch if I squeeze really hard I'll still get some drips but um, at this point I'm gonna just be letting them dry so in this not totally accurate lighting but still um, fairly accurate because it's daytime this is the colors we're working with right now when they're still wet so I can't wait to show you them when they're still dry so stay tuned for that that one will be our final overhead shot. <laughs> okay friends, it's time for the final reveal. First, I'm going to show you the birch bark tea and copper bracelet mixture, which kind of evolved over time. 
da 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 da. It's so beautiful. It's this beautiful warm brown. It has some purpley undertones, maybe a little bit of copper or gold hidden in there. And it's all perfectly dyed, opaque and perfect and wonderful and natural. It's very consistent throughout is what I'm trying to get at. There's not any speckling or any like light areas. It's all pretty saturated and pretty dark. And next, the plum branches. So this one, after being mordanted in iron, both of the wools were mordanted in iron, um, followed by being dyed in the dye bath. This one I modified with a little iron after the fact. This one I did not. So this one has a lot more gold tones. Like I said, it's still in the brownish goldish family. And I'm gonna show you these two beautiful yarns compared to some of the yarns from the last video. So if you were here in the last video, we did Concord Grape Skins. We did Concord Grape, the full grape. We did Avocado. We did Turkey Tail Mushrooms. And we did Yellow Onion Skins. Now, if you see, I've got pretty much the whole rainbow. So we go from red to some oranges. We've got, ooh, some greens and grays and blue. There's even some beautiful, like, olivey tones in this khaki sort of green color. This is the whole rainbow of natural dye now. I need to come up with some more purples and some more reds, but I am so happy with how this birch just really picked up all of the red tones. I've been seeking red, so I'm very happy that this, to me, counts as a, a dull red, some kind of maroon shade. And there is the plum blossoms. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos all the time and um, they're very heavy on natural dye right now because I am totally obsessed with all of the colors that you can get from just plants. Are you kidding me? All of these colors from plants that I found and collected. So like I said, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked this and come back for the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.